Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Bitcoin pre having live stream. And uh, we got a lot of things to cover. So let's just get right into it. First of all, uh, I, I'm not going to stream all the way into uh, the having. If you want to find that, there is about 30,000 people doing that today. I'll be jumping in uh, between different uh, live streams and Twitter spaces and things like that. Should be an interesting time. But for me, I just wanted to just go over some uh, basic information and then talk about dollar cost averaging after the Bitcoin having, is it really worth it? And we're gonna take a look at some data, which really looks like it isn't, unless you do this one thing. So this is what we got. Right now in uh, beautiful Puerto Rico, it's 3.17 p.m., same Eastern time, 3.17. And we got around five hours and 40 minutes or so before the having comes down. So uh, we'll answer, of course, what it is. I think most of us already know that, but uh, you know, as people come in, I, I sometimes forget that uh, we are there are new people here, so maybe they're not uh, uh, well versed about what's happening. I just had a, a question from my friend uh, last week, and he asked me, he goes, hey, I understand that uh, half of your Bitcoin is going to disappear. It's going to suck for you. And I'm like, well, that's not what it is, but I mean, that's a good try. So real quick, the Bitcoin having, and this was, uh, of course, put together by Satoshi Nakamoto, who no one really knows who that is or him or her or they. White paper in uh, uh, 2008. And then 2009 with the Genesis block, and we had our first uh, halving, which is essentially what the Bitcoin miners are mining using computational power to solve mathematical equations. And they are rewarded every 10 minutes with X amount of Bitcoin. 2009, that was 50. Then we had a halving in 25. So the, the miners are the ones that are really, you know, getting the shaft essentially. And then uh, 2016, that dropped by half, 12.5, 2020, 6.25. And now, in like I said, five hours or so, uh, they're going to go from 6.25 to 3.125. Great news. Uh, Bitcoin's almost at its all-time high. So the don't worry about the miners too much. And if we take a look, there's a great website called Look Into Bitcoin. And I like all the different things they have. There is a, a link in the description where you can find all this information. Again, it's free. Uh, great, you know, great information. And it goes over everything from uh, well, multiple and MVRBZ scores, and then it breaks it down by miner and miner on-chain data. So we can see here that the Bitcoin miner revenue uh, over time, of course, has, has dropped a little bit. But again, that's the revenue of what is actually being produced as far as Bitcoin. Now, back in 2010, you had a Bitcoin at like, I don't know, a couple quarters. So not a big deal if you're mining 7,000, 8,000 a day, right? But uh, of course, as time has gone on, you know, that Bitcoin price, I mean, we were at 73,000 just uh, two, three weeks ago. Now I think we're around 65, 66,000. So uh, miners are going to be okay, but of course it goes into half. So it's amazing to me, you're doing the exact same work, you have the exact same overhead or more, but you're getting half of the actual assets out. Again, thanks God, it actually appreciates. Now we take a look at miner revenue because people ask this question. They're like, well, why would miners even do this? Even if the price of Bitcoin goes up, what if it doesn't go up? What if something happens and we're in World War III and people are totally risk off because I know people will say, well, they're just gonna get a Bitcoin. Maybe not. So remember, there's two different uh, ways that miners are paid. It's the rewards in Bitcoin and the fees are the cost per transaction. So we can see right here, Again, you can break this down, minor, minor revenue, fees versus rewards. We can see that the bulk, yes, is minor rewards at 96%, and the fees are 4%, sometimes even higher than that. I think with the advent of uh, ordinals and things coming down, you can see that uh, it will change, it's essentially NFTs and Bitcoin. That will change a little bit as time goes on, especially with what's coming together with runes. And I think that's going to be a very big thing. Maximalists, uh, Bitcoin maximalists absolutely hate it, but they're going to have to deal with it. And of course, I think Bitcoin miners, I think it was even Peter Thiel, not the investor, uh, but the head of Mara uh, Bitcoin mining said, you know, in uh, February or January or February, uh, we saw a couple of days where, of course, uh, the fees were more than the rewards just from the ordinals. So I can see where this could actually play into effect. And again, don't worry about the miners. They're going to be just fine. And if you're wondering, like, you're like, well, what are runes and what are ordinals? And what about UTXO, unspent transaction outputs and things like that? I did a video. It's like five minutes long. I linked in the description so you can figure out what I think is the next big thing that's coming for Bitcoin. And it's really going to change everything forever. So I'd, uh, I would behoove you maybe to check that video out. Again, it's very short, again, about five minutes or so. So check that out. But then another big question that, that comes into it is they say, well, Rob, what about, you know, miners selling? 
because you know that's one of the big uh, sell pressures are from miners because you know you have to keep the lights on. This is from CryptoQuant. And in all actuality, you can see that as far as miner outflow, and they've labeled it as the last three Bitcoin having pieces. And you can see that uh, in the last one, in 20, 2016 or so, there was a rally of uh, major sell or minor outflow. And that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that they sold it, but you know, if you have a a, a, a wallet and you move it and you don't really do anything until it goes to the exchanges, you know, usually it's you're gonna sell something like that, right? So you can see that uh, we rallied into the halving. They were selling because they had to upgrade uh, their Bitcoin mining operation, whatever that actually entailed. And then it just kind of fell off, right? And then, of course, we come over here to the, uh, this would be the third halving. And we're looking at 2012. I think it was May 11th or May 12th. And we can see that uh, there was a little bit of selling beforehand. It leveled off. And then, of course, it comes up and then they sold a bunch. And then it just kind of levels off. And now we've seen since 2022, which I got to tell you, if... If I was a miner, I would probably try to time this a little bit better as far as selling. I don't want to sell in November 2022 when Bitcoin is 15,000 at the all-time lows. What I'd like to do is kind of sell, I don't know, maybe when we're hitting the all-time highs and you know, maybe in November 2021 or maybe in 2025 when it comes about. But you can see that, yes, there's been a little bit more sell pressure coming in in 2024, but it's leveled off. Uh, as far as January, of course, the Bitcoin having everybody get, I mean, excuse me, with the Bitcoin ETFs, everybody was ecstatic, but uh, and everybody was saying it was going to go up uh, exponentially, but it never works like that. That's just how it actually goes. And then <clears throat> lastly, like I say, don't worry about the miners. This is the hash rate. And of course, the difficulty or the difficulty adjustment uh, is uh, changed every two weeks or it is evaluated every two weeks. So even if miners capitulate and they drop off the network, that just means that, oh, the difficulty rate's not so bad. Great. We're going to actually come in here and we're going to use the miners that we have because we sold Bitcoin before. We're going to keep ourselves afloat until things become profitable. And you're going to see that it's, and it's, it's happened over the last decade plus as of course the Bitcoin hash rate keeps going up because there's miners who will say, hey, there's money to be made. I'm gonna stick around, I'm gonna do it. Again, don't worry too much about the miners. So that would lead me to my last piece. Well, before we go over some other good news, which is this, and it really is why I, I it, it, it was something that I was thinking about today in the morning, which was, you know, if we take a look at data as time has gone on, is this a good time to really continue to dollar cost average uh, Bitcoin and or alts post having. I'm just going to preface it with this. I am not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do. So the things that I'm going to talk about are things that are important to me, and maybe this would actually include something that you could get behind. Again, it, it all depends on you. And again, there's also a thing called risk versus reward. Where do you want to put your money? Where do you think things are going to actually grow? Do you think this could be in precious metals? Do you think this could be in equities? Do you think this could be in real estate? Or do you think that most of the majority of the gains could come into crypto and it is going to be into some crazy meme coin or into Bitcoin? So again, when we're going over these things, just remember, this is the things that actually work for me and this is what makes sense for me moving forward, my for you. So... We take a look at this and I was thinking to myself, well, let's just go back in time because we can't go back. We can't go in the future. I'm not a not a soothsayer. I don't have a crystal ball. So I was going to take a look at is the years between 2018 to 2022. And I want to take a look at three things. First of all, let's just say that you dollar cost average from the last cycle, right? Because we all know this, the four year cycles. I still believe in them. You know, we have a halving. And we have a next year's the all-time high, the dip and a reset. Having all-time high dip reset, having all-time high dip reset. It keeps happening. So let's just say for the last one that you started to dollar cost average on January 1st, 2018. The peak of the altcoins, or excuse me, the whole crypto market uh, was around December 17th, 2017. Things dropped off in January. I wanted to include the whole month because actually Ethereum actually hit its all-time high in January 2018. So I thought, okay, this could be a good point not to start at the absolute bottom, but just to see how it goes because this is what we've all been doing, most of us, right? And I think when you watch this, you're going to think to yourself, okay, I've done the hard work, which you have in the bear market. That's where all the gains are made is in the bear market. Now, all you got to do is at some point, maybe take some profits in the bull market. So let's say you go from 2018 and, and you dollar cost average 10 bucks a day. Okay, 10 bucks a day. And you go all the way to 2021. What would your gains look like? 
And what I, again, what I use is I use Ben's website, you know, the Cryptoverse, and this part is free, the DCA equal amount. You can sign up for that, get it free and go over the same data. And if you take a look at it, <clears throat> if you would have gone from January 1st, 2018, and you would have stopped on November 30th, 2020. Remember, our all-time high peak for the entire crypto market was roughly November 7th, 8th, 9th, 2021. Let's just say you stopped in, on November 30th. And I pulled the data from November 9th, 2021. So you were dollar cost averaging quite a bit. Where would you be in Bitcoin? Well, again, you did what you were supposed to do. You dollar cost average in the bear market. You would be up 645%. You would have invested $14,000. And for Bitcoin, you'd have 105,000. Congratulations, really good. Now with alts, a little bit riskier, but with ETH, you would have had 236,000. With Cardano, 376,000. With Chainlink, 526,000. Solana, 595,000. Matic, 698. And the king of memes, <laughs> Dogecoin, you'd have invested 14,000 and you would have had a million dollars back. Not too bad. And then some would have underperformed. Stacks, Atom, AVAX, Near, because they're kind of new, Injectable and IMX, Immutable X. You wouldn't have done so great. But when we take a look at this, you're like, well, that's easy. Why don't I just go into alts? Because Rob is just telling me that, you know, Bitcoin only did such percentage up. Why don't I just go into alts? Well, you can, but guess what? Here's the historical snapshot taken from CoinMarketCap. And you can see this is from 14th of January, 2018. Do you recognize some of these? Or excuse me, do you recognize all of these? I recognize Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Cardano, Litecoin. Most of this stuff I only know about because I've been around since 2017. Most of you don't know this stuff. NEM, Stellar, yeah, probably so. NEO, eh, IOTA, EOS, only Beardy knows that one. Dash, Monero, Tron, eh, Bitcoin Gold, Ethereum Classic, Icon, Qtum, and there's a slew of stuff on number 19 to 50, which makes absolutely no sense. So all the things I just talked about, do you see me? Is there, Was Doge in there in the top 20? Was Matic? Was Solana? Was Chainlink? Cardano was. ETH was. Was Stax, Atom, AVAX, Near? Were they there? No, they weren't there. And that's why it's risk versus reward. So when I talk about these things, I'm trying to kind of focus a little bit more on Bitcoin. So that was great, right? Great, Rob. We just went through a nice recap. Let's move forward. Let's say that you just dollar cost average from the in the bear market and you stopped at the halving. You did not buy anything else after the halving. How would you have done, historically speaking? Pretty good, quite honestly. Actually, you would have done better. If you just would have stopped buying your Bitcoin, you would have been up 817%. Now, of course, you didn't put as much in and you have 79,000, but the return is like 200% higher just by stopping. Solana, ETH, ADA, Matic, Doge. Well, okay, you got me on Doge. But if you just stopped after the halving, you'd have been just fine. And it's because all the hard work, when everybody was telling you you were a moron, which is where really the toughest part is, you would have been just fine, just not dollar cost averaging after the having go, look, I did the hard stuff. That's it. Now let's take a look at this. What if you said, you know what? I, I, I just couldn't do it in the, in, in the bear market. I just couldn't do it. Now the having's here. I hear a lot of things about, you know, uh, there is scarcity. Now we're only having half of the Bitcoin that's out there. And there's, there's rumblings of, uh, a, a uh, country using Bitcoin. There's rumblings of major institutions coming in. This thing called MicroStrategy. I don't know. You're like, okay. What if you dollar cross average from May 2020 to the peak of November 2021? Essentially, what we're talking about now. You'd have been done. You you would have done fine. I mean, let's be honest. You would have beat the S and P 500. But you wouldn't have done too great. Look at these numbers. For Bitcoin, you're only up 200 percent. 200 percent. Let's go back here. If you would have done from January 2018 and stopped at the halving, your Bitcoin, you would have been up 817% at the all-time high. Again, if you would have gone from, from 2018, January, 
all the way to the all-time high, you'd only be up 645%. So the best way you could have done things in the past, I'm not saying it's going to do that, is just stop right after the halving. And that's it. So for here, and he wouldn't do so great at all. I mean, it's not that much time. Near Adam stacks, you're up 500%. AVAX, and you're still doing great. Let's be honest. ETH, 600%. ADA, 940%. Doge, 49 Dematic. Solana, you would have crushed it. Half a million dollars. Pretty good. But again, it just really does just come down to as far as like the percentages and how much you're up overall. And you can see that with Bitcoin, 200%, still pretty good. But it makes you think about, you know, maybe I should get into something that's might a little bit risky. Maybe I don't want to because a 2x is great. Or maybe I just stop because I don't want to get off the merry-go-round. I'm just telling you. Now let's take a look at this one. And this is where I think the bad rap for, for crypto comes from. When we go through this next cycle, and after we get to this blow off top, whether it be left translated cycle like Bob Lucas talks about, or whether that be in the 2025, like a lot of different traders and investors are, are talking about as well, or if we, I'm not, I hate saying this word, where we go in a super cycle. Yeah, I don't think that's happening, but what, whatever it is, this is where the majority of the people are gonna get stuck. And this is where you have to be, probably some of you actually fell victim to this, which is, let's just say that you got in during the peak of the bull market, or around the peak between the April first top and the second top in November. And you got in October of 2021 and you lasted six to eight months because you're just like, ah, there's no money in this. Crypto is a scam. Bitcoin's a scam. Everything's a scam. I keep getting the money taken away from me. You guys are liars. Where would you be? This is where you're going to be. And this is where we're going to have to deal with people coming in. They're going to be down majorly because they're going to get into the peak. And this is what screws everything up. And this is why I'm stepping down from this channel at the peak of the bull market, because nobody needs me in the bull. They need me. I think they, they need channels when they're down like this much and going, hey, you're down and that's awful. But this is where all the money's made. And this is what it is. So when I take a look at these this data points, I'm like, why? For me, it doesn't make any sense to keep dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin. It doesn't. A 2x is not what I'm here for. I mean, I don't roll out of bed for that. I've done all the hard work. When everybody was saying, stop dollar cost averaging in the, in the bear market, that's when I'm, all the money's made. And I would have stopped there if it wasn't for this last piece. Oops. Dynamic DCing. And I thought to myself, okay, let's take a look at the last period. And let's go from the halving point, May 12, 2020, and if we would have dynamic DCA'd to November 30th, 2021, how would I have done? First of all, as a fresh little, little recap, dynamic DCAing is not DCAing every day or every week. What it is is time and risk bands. And it's very simple. And this is why I like Ben's website so much because the time and risk bands are there. And you're, what you do is, because right now we're at 0 0.6, I think we're at 0 0.65 as far as risk bands, which is right here where it says no with a bunch of those. So you don't buy at 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. You don't buy at 0 0.5 to 0. You don't buy at 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. You're thinking about selling over here. You don't do squat until you hit, until there's a massive, not a massive, but there's a pullback and it goes to 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Then you say, you know what? Time to back up the truck. And then when it goes even lower, you say, and this is this goes contrary to what most people will, will talk about as far as investing. When the price goes lower, you're like, I'm going to put double in. And then when it goes in this wristband, I'm going to quadruple. And then when it goes into this wristband, you 6x. If you would have done that, and you can go to the website and do this, this dynamic DCA. Well, that part's, that's, that's a paid part, sorry. This dynamic DCA, if you would have done that, Again, from the time frame of the last halving to the peak, you'd be at 561%. So if you would have done the other way and just said, bad dollar cost average, 10 bucks a day, whatever, you're up 200%. 200% versus 561%. 200%, excuse me, 213.3% versus 561%. And it's a lot less stress. You're just like, 
uh, prices are dropping. And then I, I put this little picture up here because these are like the little uh, announcements on my phone where it says, hey, Bitcoin risk is 0 0.62 at 61,000. You're in the 0 0.6 band. I'm like, oh, okay, don't do nothing. And when I get alerts for like 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0, I'm like, oh, that's right. I got to start buying because it's price is really dropping. I mean, I'll probably be aware of that, you know, beforehand, but I'm just saying. So that's it in a nutshell. You know, you can, for me, I don't, it doesn't make sense the dollar cost average like I've been doing. Now it only makes sense to dynamic DCA. I probably would have done much better if I just would have dynamic DCA, but that's a, that's a whole nother video. And again, if you're looking for Ben's site, links in the description, that light plan is free. The one we, we went over, uh, the one, the time and wristbands, there's a sale going on and it's going on until the halving. I think it stops tomorrow. So it's like 39 bucks a month instead of like 49 or 129. So I leave it up to you. That's just what I see. Let me just think about that in the comment section. And then also just a couple of good points. I, this is positive, I think. Uh, the USDT or the Tether Treasury just minted another, yeah, you know, billion dollars roughly. And every time this happens, we start to see a little, little spike in, uh, in price action. Uh, also, this I tweeted this out today. Israel carried out a strike against uh, Iran. I guess that was like last night. I woke up and I was sleeping. I'm like, oh, this is big news. But apparently it wasn't because it was like uh, we saw a dip yesterday as everybody told me what a moron I am because it happened six hours ago. Sorry, I'm not a robot. I don't stay up all night. <laughs> but then I saw this. This was good. I, th I felt Tehran plays down reported Israel attacks, signals no retaliation. So, hey, maybe World War III is avoided. We'll see what happens. So that's good. Also, I thought this was interesting. The IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund, says Bit I did not see this coming. It was not on my bingo card. It says Bitcoin has become a necessary financial tool for preserving wealth amid financial instability. Well, that would be good for all the people who think that Bitcoin is unnecessary and it has no value and it's worthless and just buy gold. Take that. Uh, so first of all, this is the same IMF. They give out loans, monetary policy globally. They, they have 190 different countries that, uh, that, they, that they service. They're the same IMF that wanted El Salvador to choose between Bitcoin and a bailout. Pretty much said, if you choose Bitcoin, we're not going to help you. Well, oh yeah, that happened two years ago. They chose Bitcoin and now they're going to get a massive loan uh, from the IMF and they're going to be using Bitcoin. So eh, whatever. And then, of course, the IMF, 190 member countries, they provide policy advice to help stabilize economies, policy advice, financial assistance, cap uh, capacity development. And uh, it's pretty much run by some of the big countries that are out there. I think uh, one of the governors are, is uh, Janet Yellen from the U.S. Secretary uh, Treasury and uh, a couple other different uh, major countries, which pretty much take a look and essentially squeeze the people for their loans. But this is what they said, just real quick. The report was called a primer on Bitcoin cross-border flows, sheds lights on how the decentralized nature of Bitcoin is being leveraged to bypass traditional banking systems, especially in regions experiencing economic distress. The report highlighted significant transaction volumes, countries like Argentina and Venezuela, where citizens face hyperinflation. In these regions, Bitcoin has become a necessary financial tool for preserving wealth and assessing local, global markets. And this was from the report author, uh, Eugenio Coruti, nailed it. Bitcoin transactions provide a way for individuals in high inflation countries to stabilize their savings and participate in global commerce on terms that aren't possible through their local currencies. So that's a win for us. And of course, there's some, you know, they, they talk about the risks like money laundering and, and cross-border payments and uh, stuff like that. And it gets kind of boring. But again, a big win for us. If the IMF is coming on saying, hey, Bitcoin has value, I'd like the other people to dispute that and come to this article so they can stop yapping and talking nonsense and you know who you are. Uh, it just makes no sense to me. It, it irritates me to no end. I don't understand why this happens. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And then lastly, it's not how much you make folks, it's how much you keep. And I cannot say that enough. This was from uh, Ashni and uh, she was, there was a Trojan attack through Coinbase. No, Coinbase didn't do it. But here's what it was. Uh, she took a call from somebody because she is uh, some type of KOL influencer type of thing. 
And uh, she looked at all the information, it looked good. They had a great website. They had something on LinkedIn. They had a gold check mark on X. And uh, she talked to them, not face to face, but uh, through a Zoom meeting, everything looked good. And for some reason, they said, hey, we need you to download some of our software so we can evaluate it. She did it. And then she lost 25% of everything on Coinbase. First of all, let's be honest. Really? You're going to download something from somebody who you th this doesn't make any sense. I can kind of see it. I can because, you know, like you're wrapped in things you only know. So first of all, don't download anything. And uh, second of all, unless you're like a KOL or influencers and work in this, in this situation, I can understand it, but you're not. So don't do anything goofy like that. And the third thing is this. What are the rules that we've always talked about here? You know, we, we've talked about these rules and, and these rules are right there. It's all gone. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam and self promote otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way, right? We all know these things. So don't do that. That's the big thing. One of the things I, I, I want, want to remind everybody is that don't leave things on exchanges. I'm guilty of this. I buy things on, on Coinbase. I leave them there for like a week, sometimes 10 days, but you got to take them off. Grab yourself a tangent or get a junky ledger. I don't care or a Tracer or whatever else, but it's cold storage wallets. They're very easy to use. This is the easiest. This is my preferred one. I use them for essentially 35 to 45% of my entire crypto are on these cold storage devices. So there's a link in the description. You can get it for 10% off. And I go over the uh, pros and cons of everything. You can find that video again in the description from there. And then also, and lastly, I just want to give a shout out to a uh, friend of the show, Tony Edwards, who does a fantastic job uh, day in and day out talking to uh, politicians, thought leaders, people in the crypto community. And he's got a book out. I just ordered it uh, from Amazon. It's 18 bucks and it's good. I mean, it looks good. And what he talks about in this book, why FTX was uh, not the ethos of crypto, crypto, regulatory battles, SEC versus Ripple, Grayscale versus SEC, Operation Chokepoint 2.0, what the future of crypto looks like, tokenization, token economy, the do's and don'ts, and why I believe the American dream can be saved with crypto and blockchain tech. I, we'll see. So there's a link in the description for Tony's book. I ordered it myself, 18 bucks. Check that out. And that's it for today. So that's it. Not too bad. 27 minutes. So everybody, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about it's time sensitive. Now that we're at the having, hey, just uh, take it easy. You did all the hard work already, right? You did all the things that you had to do in the bear market. You bought when everybody's making fun of you. You bought when you're sniffing other. We told you we were a moron. Congratulations. You're probably going to be rich. That's it. So if you want to take off, take off. Uh, enjoy the having parties tonight. I'll probably stop buying some things and.